This is a dynamic programming problem or dynamic optimization problem that we're going to be solving. Um, we are taking this problem from uh, this article, Dynamic Optimization of Constrained Chemical Engineering Problems Using Dynamic Programming. And uh, this is a reactor, um, in this case a uh, just a continuously stirred reactor where we have uh, reactants uh, coming in and then leaving. And then you have A goes to B goes to C with a reaction rate um, of K1 times X1 squared. Um, and that would be the uh, concentration of A. And then we have K2 times X2 squared. And that would be the concentration of B squared times K2. So these are the reaction rates. And uh, we're going to see that the K value is uh, K1. It depends on uh, temperature. Okay, with an Arrhenius-like expression. So as the temperature increases, the uh, reaction rate is going to increase exponentially. Okay, so we have um, we have this dynamic system, um, and first of all, we want to just derive uh, some dynamic equations. Okay, this is just a species balance for A. So we have uh, the um, this would be a batch reactor. So you know, nothing coming in or leaving. Okay, so no inlet or outlet terms, just a reaction rate term that is the consumption of A. And then you have, uh, as A is consumed, it's converted to B. And uh, then you also have uh, the production rate of, of C there. So you lose B as you convert it to C as well. Okay, so the first part is A goes to B, and then B goes to C. So this is A goes to B, and then B goes to C. Okay, so these are dynamic equations that we derive from species balances. Okay, then we also have a few algebraic equations as well. A couple here for K1 and K2. Um, and then those are just going to be substituted um, here as well. Okay, so this, if we, if we pose this in this way, we call this a differential algebraic equation system or DAE. Now, we're not just going to solve this uh, system, but we're going to allow the optimizer to adjust temperature of this reactor over time between 298 and 398. Okay, so these are the variable constraints. Um, and we're going to be starting with initial conditions of, uh, you know, the concentration of A is initially going to equal 1. And the concentration of B will be equal to 0, and C will equal 0 as well. Okay, um, and then we're going to go to a final time of just 1. So we'll start at 0, go to a final time of 1, and then uh, try to maximize. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to try to maximize the amount of X2 at the final time, or uh, the concentration of B. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is by changing or manipulating, this is going to be our manipulated variable, the temperature. And as you saw before, that had upper and lower bounds there. So here's our dynamic optimization problem. We have um, an objective function. We have some dynamic equations, algebraic equations. We have initial conditions, variable constraints, and a final time. Okay, so uh, now what I'm going to do is just convert over to um, the model file and uh, go ahead and create this um, this model file. If you want to follow along, if you, you can type this out or you can come to the uh, apmonitor.com website, uh, select the uh, take a course link and then uh, select dynamic optimization. We're going to be covering um, these problems in the benchmarks section. This is benchmark problem number four. Okay, so you can see the source files there. If you want to download those, you're welcome to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just create these from uh, blank files. Okay, so I'm going to create, uh, first of all, an uh, example 4.apm file. Um, and then just put my um, parameters, variables, and equations in here. So here I have a parameter P and U. Um, the U is get, actually going to be the temperature. Okay, I'm going to say that's greater than 298 and less than 398. And then have my variables as well, x1 and x2. And I'm going to give it initial conditions of 1 and 0. Okay, let me just put this over 
here as I build this so that um, we can see this as we as we create this file. Okay, so I have some intermediate equations. Um, I have K1 is going to be equal to 4,000 times uh, the exponent of uh, negative 2,500 divided by the temperature. And then do the same thing for K2 as well. Okay, now I have uh, my equations. I want to maximize X2. Uh, but I don't just want to maximize X2 uh, throughout the whole time horizon. I just want to do it at the very end. And so that's where the parameter P is going to come in. It's going to be zero everywhere except for at the very um, last point where it'll equal one. Okay, and then I want to add my dynamic equations. Dollar sign equals uh, derivative. Um, and then I have negative k1 times x1 squared, and then I have uh, my expression, my second differential equation here. Okay, so that uh, that completes my, um, this is my model file here. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is just create a data file. Um, I need my time values I want to solve at, but also um, I want my p value as well in there. So I'm going to have uh, intervals, I'll just say 0.1 going up to 1. I'll also add this uh, 0 0.001, a thousandth of a second, just so it makes a decision on the temperature after a, a thousandth of a, of a uh, time unit. And then I'm going to go all the way down to 1. I'll also have P in there. Uh, that's going to be 0 everywhere except for at the very last point where it'll equal 1. Okay, so there is my data file. Just need to save it as a uh, CSV file. So go file and then save as and um, and then make sure it's selected as a, a comma delimited. Don't select these other ones. Um, if you're on Mac, make sure it's compatible with uh, the uh, Windows uh, version as well. We do this just how it uh, does the line ending. Okay, so go ahead and save it. Um, and then when you close it, uh, Microsoft will ask you if you want to save it again. You've already saved it once. Okay, um, all right, so let's go to my folder. And I'm just going to open this uh, data file up with Notepad. You can just see it's a, a text file, a CSV file, separated by commas. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is just create a um, my MATLAB and Python script. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, create both of these side by side. First for MATLAB, I'm going to clear all, close all, clear the screen, and then define a server and an application name. For Python, I'm just going to define a server and an application name. Next, I'm going to add uh, the path to the APM folder. Uh, and in Python, I just import uh, APM. That's the AP Monitor library for doing these dynamic optimization problems. Okay, um, APM, uh, I'll, I'll give the command uh, clear all and then load my model file, load my data file. Okay, same thing here, clear all, load my model file, load my data file. Um, now I have a couple options I want to insert. This is uh, just defines, um, like for example, the collocation nodes, the solver that I'm going to use, uh, iMode 6 means dynamic optimization, and MV type 1 means, um, that means uh, linear interpolation between the manipulated variable points. Okay, so you can either have zero order hold or first order hold of your MVs. Um, I'm going to define a new manipulated variable, in this case my temperature, which I renamed as U in my file. Um, but I could name that temperature as well. And then I'm going to turn the status on and the DCOS, the delta penalty okay, for moving temperature, is set equal to zero. By default, it's a small value like 1 times 10 to the minus fifth. Um, I'm going to then go ahead and solve it. Um, so just record the output of those and then display, um, just display or print the output depending on if I'm in MATLAB or Python. Okay, now I'm going to just retrieve the solution and um, just rename the solution uh, y.x as z and then I'll display the optimal solution. I just want to get the very last value of of x2, but I've got to make sure I put that into a uh, with num to string because I'm combining it with a string there. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, do, make a figure and uh, let's do this in Python to get the solution, print the optimal solution. 
uh, convert it to a string just for the very last point in X2. And then I'm going to create a figure. Okay, first subplot, I'm gonna put U on it. Second subplot, I'll put X1 and X2 on those, just with some labels and to make the uh, figure just a little bit nicer. Okay, and then the last thing you gotta do in Python, don't forget the uh, plt.show. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run these. Um, I'm gonna open up MATLAB, um, but I'll also open up Python. Okay, so uh, there's the IDLE. I'll go ahead and run it in Python. Okay, so it ran it in Python. MATLAB just opened as well. Okay, and uh, there is the Python result. So here is the optimal solution for the temperature profile over time to maximize um, X2. So I want to get X2 as high as I can. Okay. I want to get it, um, right now it's about 0.6 or so, um, and this was the optimal profile of temperature uh, between 0 and 1. So if I went further off into the future, it might change the profile of how I manipulate my temperature to maximize that intermediate product a, uh, B um, in this A goes to B goes to C reaction. Okay, let's see this in uh, MATLAB as well. I'm just going to go ahead and run this with the run button there. It's going to load. Um, okay, and then I can also go back to the MATLAB or the Python console and see that it took 17 iterations. I can see the objective and the convergence. It took about uh, 0.1 seconds to solve and there you can see um, the objective. Okay, so I was trying to maximize uh, B. There's my optimal solution. Um, and you can see just a little bit more about the problem statistics. This dynamic optimization problem had uh, 209 variables, 198 equations, and 11 degrees of freedom. So it had 11 degrees of freedom because there was um, one value of temperature that it could select over those time intervals of, of point, um, 0.1 uh, from 0 to uh, 1. Okay, so there are 11 decisions that the optimizer had to make, but also still satisfying those other 198 uh, equations. Okay, so that is uh, the tutorial on uh, dynamic optimization, just solving this, uh, this benchmark problem. And uh, so just to review, we created this, uh, we, you know, we created this, um, these files uh, to, to solve this problem. Uh, we are trying to maximize X2 by changing this, uh, this temperature right here. This is the range that we could operate in and to do that we created uh, this, this uh, model file right here with parameters, variables. I put in some intermediates but you could have just put those directly into the equations. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to uh, read because these are substituted down uh, here. Um, and, and so it makes it a little bit easier to read uh, the model when you use intermediates. Okay, and then we also defined a data file. Okay, so we have a model file, um, model plus data. Okay, and then we solve it. And then we retrieve our solution um, and okay so we'll retrieve the solution and then plot it. So that's essentially what we did with the scripts. We loaded the model file, loaded the data file, um, solved it, um, retrieved the solution and then just plotted the solution.